this one-of-a-kind four-color paint scheme on the A6E Intruder, which was aboard the Teddy Roosevelt at the beginning of Desert Storm, might have been an experimental camouflage scheme for use in the desert by the United States Navy. I say this is a four-color scheme since the ray dome is a different gray color than the rest of the plane. I could find no other information on why this unusual scheme was on this one aircraft. To start the paint, I am starting with TCP-1202 Federal Standard 36375 Light Compass Ghost Gray on the underside of the aircraft which appears to be common for the majority of A6E U.S. Navy aircraft aboard the Teddy Roosevelt. Please note that I am painting all of the pieces that will be on the underside of the aircraft, including the fuel pods and underwing surfaces. Certain items, such as the fuel pods, have to be painted on the second side, so that is shown here as well. TCP 1338 Federal Standard 33711 U.S. Marine Corps Sand is the first color to be applied to the upper surface of the aircraft. Note, this Federal Standard color and all other colors used on the exterior camouflage scheme was designated by the aftermarket 172nd decal sheet purchased expressly for this project. Notice I turn and tilt the parts to ensure complete coverage. The air intakes and exhaust system are painted TCP 1226 titanium. Note the air intake exteriors were masked with TCP-900 masking paper prior to spraying the titanium. Since the radome color is shown to be a very light gray, I chose to paint this TCP 256 light gray primer. After masking the underside of the fuselage and the stabilizers, as well as the underwing surfaces, it is time to apply the TCP 1338 Federal Standard 33711 U.S. Marine Corps Sand as the first of the main camouflage colors to these assemblies. I am now ready to begin assembly of the body of the aircraft. First is placing the intake shields into the intakes, making sure they fit flush to the outer edge. Then I cement these assemblies onto the fuselage. Note that the fit of these parts are not perfect and there may be a minor gap. I am now ready to begin assembly of the body of the aircraft. First is placing the intake shields into the intakes, making sure they fit flush to the outer edge. Then I cement those assemblies to the fuselage. Note that the fit of these parts are not perfect and there may be a minor gap. Now, 
we are ready to cement the stabilizers onto the rear of the fuselage. Leaving the masking in place on the underside of the wings, I now cement the upper and lower wing halves together. The fit of these parts are very good. Unfortunately, I neglected to show any masking. Now we are ready to cement the wings in place. We note these fit well also with no gaps present, so you don't have to worry about adding putty. Keep the masking of the undersides of the fuselage and the wings in place. CP-1408 Earth Yellow is now being spray painted on the upper side of the aircraft. Note, we did not show the masking application of our TCP-900 masking paper, but we followed the zebra stripe pattern shown on the AOA aftermarket decal sheet. We sincerely apologize that we didn't show the cutting of the masking to achieve this pattern. Note that the zebra stripe pattern covers the entire upper part of the fuselage, wings, and stabilizers, and that each piece of the masking stripe has some curvatures. TCP-1202 Light Compass Ghost Gray is being sprayed on the cover for the front wheel area. This piece has to be cemented in place after the strut and wheel assembly is cemented in place is why it is a separate piece rather than molded into the underside of the fuselage. Every piece of the masking paper on the entire aircraft body we have painted now has to be removed. Carefully peel the masking off all areas, both the top and the bottom of the aircraft. If you use a pointed tweezer to start a corner like I do, be ultra careful not to scratch the paint. You may choose any tool to help you remove the masking that is available to you as long as it does not damage the surface. As you can see, no paint was removed from the upper or lower surfaces and no residual material was left by the masking. The camouflage pattern is very sharp, which is what you want on a multicolored camouflage scheme. TCP-018 Gloss Finish is now sprayed on the upper surface of the A6E intruder in preparation for adding the decals particular 
for the aircraft assigned to the USS Teddy Roosevelt. Since we use a lot of gloss, I am spraying from a 2 ounce bottle fitted with a Badger adapter at 28 to 30 PSI using a Vega 2000 airbrush fitted with a 0.3 millimeter or medium tip. I will repeat the same procedure for the underside. Although there are many parts that still need to be cemented together or to the underside of the fuselage, we have to cement the radome onto the front of the aircraft to see the correct position of some of the forward decals. Therefore, I am cementing the radome with CA as it does not harm the paint which has already been applied to this area. If you have any questions about techniques explored in this video or general questions about this build, please post your questions in the comments section below.